Welcome back to Alpha Ball Hunting. I'm Phil Mendoza. In the next couple video clips, we're going to be breaking down my version of effective range. Okay, welcome back. Now, oftentimes people talk about maximum effective range or how they determine their effective range, and it's just a, a random number sometimes it gets thrown out. Um, I'm going to teach you what I like to do and, and my take on things, uh, and I, I'm going to use it breaking down which, what I call the rule of thirds, and, and it's not the rule of thirds like some people think that is photography or whatever. That's, that's a different rule of thirds. If, you're, if you found this video because you typed in rule of thirds, this isn't your video. We're going to be talking about hunting, uh, some blood, and, and, and maybe even get a little bit in depth as to uh, some, some, some other things too. But anyway, rule of thirds as it pertains to effective range, and I'm gonna tell you how I break it down. So first things first, uh, it comes down to understanding your group size at, at your maximum distance in perfect controlled uh, target shooting situation. So when I'm talking about that, uh, if, if I say that my 80 yard group, let's just say this is a target at 80 yards, right? Okay, and here's me with bow in hand. So if my distance, my group size at 80 yards happens to be, and I'm just throwing a number out here, but let's just say it happens to be six inches. Okay, six inch group at 80 yards. Now as I take it out to, let's say 100 yards, so I've got my target butt out here, and this is 100 yards. So as I get move into 100 yards, let's just say my group size gets up to nine inches, okay? and this is numbers for easy math. So understanding what your group size is at different distances is where we start. So that's step one. You need to know what your group size is at, you know, at different distances. Once you get out past eight or nine inches, honestly, um, in my opinion, that starts to get outside the realm of uh, effective range and consistency. So I'm using these numbers for, for easy math. This is my 80 yard group, okay? So, the next thing I wanna talk about is understanding the animal size that you're shooting at. So, in an application where you take the average body size of an elk, top of the back to the belly line, you've got roughly 28 inches, okay? This is average. This is for average mature bull elk. So when you're talking about 28 inches, we're going to uh, understand where your your vitals are and in knowing that your vitals on an animal are not perfectly round right so this is this is where we start this is how we're starting to use math to break down um, again my my formula my take on it I've got some notes here sorry so if you consider the front shoulder right this is a terrible drawing but um, the, the back legs this bottom about roughly five inches is a no shoot, this is, this is kind of a no kill area, okay? Um, and then you take the top, uh, you know, roughly eight inches, okay? And this is also a no kill area. Now, under, yes, I understand the spine is there, somebody hits in the spine, that's, we're talking about hitting the vitals, we're, we're talking about making a clean shot, and, and this is what I wanna focus on. So, taking that in, into account, you've got roughly, 15 inches that could potentially be your vital area. Okay, so from this, this, this is ideal, this is optimal, this is in a perfect situation. When you start talking about missing a shoulder, hitting lungs, heart, liver area, we're talking about an elk having potentially a 15 inch vitals area. Now let's take this down a step, okay? Let's take this down to a mule deer sized animal. Now in a mule deer, average size on a mule deer, same kind of terrible drawing, uh, is about 20 inches, okay? So again, let's, let's eliminate this bottom, let's call it four inches on a mule deer. And, um, you know, let's call it six inches so we can get some easy math in here on, uh, on the top side that we, that, that's our no shoot zone. So now we have potentially a 10 inch um, somewhat 
vital area. This is maximum distance. This is maximum coverage area. Uh, and, and honestly, that we're talking height now. Depth is not something I'm talking about yet, and I'll tell you why in a second. You take it, so I'm gonna, so we've got elk, I'm gonna take some notes here. Okay, elk, we've got roughly 15 inches. Mule deer, we've got roughly 10 inches. Okay, so let's take it a step further, and let's break it down into the smallest of the three that I'm gonna be talking about, which is pronghorn and you've got roughly 14 inches of average um, top of the back to the belly line. So in that situation, again, I'm gonna say that, you know, probably three inches is in our no shoot zone on the bottom. Um, you know, maybe five inches is on the no shoot zone in the top. So uh, five, eight, we got roughly six inches, if my math serves me correctly, that, that our vitals is in that pronghorn. So, um, so now let's, let's, let's start working backwards again, okay? And let's start working off of these numbers. So, going back into, again, my rule of thirds. If my group size is eight, at 80 yards is six inches, some people might say, well, that's, that's it, right? Your, your effective range should be 60 y or 80 yards for pronghorn. No, the answer is that is no. Um, what I'm gonna tell you about first is starting to talk about this, and then we're gonna break into the, uh, the different distances. So pronghorn, if, if, if the vital area on the height side is six inches, now you've got shoulder to contend with, you've got the back of the liver, you've got shot angle, so many different things. So what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna scratch that and I'm gonna take and go with two thirds of this size here and my group size needs to be wherever my maximum distance at four inches of a group size, now is what I'm gonna be comfortable shooting at that animal at. So I'm giving myself a one third room of error and that's not in all applications, that's just my starting point, okay? So now I'm gonna go and working backwards, I can spell pronghorn. So I want to know what, what distance I can keep a four inch group size at, okay? Now let's take the mule deer. So mule deer 10, you know, it's uh, whatever, six point something inches. So I'm just gonna call it six inches for easy math. Again, some people might say, hey, you can shoot a, uh, six inch group at 80 yards, that's what you should be, your maximum effective range should be. And again, that's not the way I, I play this game and the way I prepare. So mule deer, I'm trying to see where my six inch group, again, roughly two thirds of what the vital area is for that. Elk, you know, for math purposes, we're 10 inches. And again, no, my maximum effective range is not 100 yards for elk. That's just, I want to know that I can hit that group size because once you start taking into account, so let's just say this is your group size and you've taken about two thirds of it, this is what you really should be focusing on as far as uh, wanting to take out into the field because when you start adding into the element of uh, heart rate elevated, footing not what, not proper, wind, um, all those things, that stuff should, you should shrink your acceptable group size that you're shooting at an animal based off some of those characteristics. In the second video that I'm gonna link over, I'm gonna break it down further than this yet, and I'm gonna go still with my rule of thirds, but this is my starting point. My effective, maximum effective range for mule deer and pronghorn and elk are not the same as each other. And, and that's just because I've actually put some math into my process uh, before I go out in the field. So if I have a, a pronghorn, for example, that I'm stalking into, I know what distance I wanna try to get to at a bare minimum, if not closer. Same thing with elk and mule deer. And a lot of it starts with this type of formula. So if you know at each distance where your group size is, start with that understand the animal size vitals that you're talking about. I believe white-tailed deer falls into the category of 17 inches average from top of the back to the belly line. So keep that into consideration. Obviously, 
different parts of the region are going to vary with that size as you go up into Canada or down into Mississippi. So those necessarily won't always apply, but understanding the size, average size body uh, in the animal you're hunting that you're pursuing can help you start to break down where your effective uh, starting point range should be. So that's part one. Make sure you check out part two that we're gonna clip over to and break this down further.